Hello, everybody, and welcome, and thank you for joining us to get today again uh, for today's weekly walk. My name is Carla, and welcome to Central Park. I'm glad that all of you can be with us again today. So today, before we get started on our weekly walk, we'll just go over some of our Zoom features. Um, so a reminder that even though everyone is muted, we still want to hear from you and you can use the Q&A feature at the bottom to let us know who you are and where you're joining us from. Um, and you can use the, I'm sorry, use the chat feature uh, to let us know where you're from um, and where you're joining us from. And you can use the Q&A feature if you should have any questions. And my colleague Ryan is join, joining us on the back end to answer any questions you might have. Um, you can also use that live transcript feature for your closed captioning. Um, and we will be launching a poll during our weekly walk together. So you'll see that pop up on your screen and then I will share the results with you. On today's weekly walk, um, we are going to be talking about preparing for winter um, on today's weekly walk, November 23rd, 2022. And of course, as always, um, as many of you are well aware, the Central Park Conservancy is the nonprofit who takes care of Central Park um, throughout the year. And our mission here is to preserve and celebrate Central Park as a sanctuary from the pace and pressures of city life enhancing the enjoyment and well-being of all. So we're just going to be taking a little walk together here today, um, enjoying some of the afternoon sunshine as our temperatures are starting to drop around here in the Northeast. And we're going to talk about how we all prepare ourselves for the upcoming colder winter months ahead. We'll enter at 81st Street and we will end at Turtle Pond. We'll be together for about um, 15 to 20 minutes. And all of the photographs that you'll see today uh, are photographs that were taken by me within the last week, um, in addition to a few photos from the archives of the Central Park Conservancy. All right, so let's get started. Uh, we are entering here at 81st Street, and things are looking nice and tidy here. Uh, everything is in order, which is a nice way to start the winter off with everything uh, nice and tidy and cleaned up before we start dealing with ice and snow and all of that. And as soon as we enter the park, one of the first things to greet us on our walk here um, are these late fall blooming wildflowers called snake root. And these bloom all over the park. So I know we've talked to you folks about this flower before. Um, but checking, seeing these flowers right on my walk um, had me wondering whether plants know that winter is coming. Because it almost feels like these little delicate flowers have no idea, um, you know, what's about to happen in the next few months. Um, but of course, plants are very, very sensitive uh, to light and temperature because that has so much to do with their survival. So they absolutely do know that winter is coming. Um, so both plants and animals like us, we are animals, we all have um, circadian rhythms, uh, in, like an internal circadian clock that helps us have an intuitive understanding about what time of day it is and also what time of year it is. Um, so plants, as I said, they need light to survive, to photosynthesize and make their own food. So they um, are absolutely very sensitive to knowing how much sunlight they're getting during a day um, and how many hours of darkness they're getting in a day. So that helps them to know to work hard during the day when the sun is up and make lots of food, and then to rest when it's uh, dark at nighttime because there is no sunlight to make food. And simil similarly, uh, that is how they know that it's um, getting to be the winter time of the year because the days are shorter, there's fewer hours of sunlight, and there's more hours of darkness. And so that helps them know um, that winter is coming. Um, but plants have different ways of dealing with the colder months. So some plants, which are annuals, which complete their life cycle in one growing season, um, those are not going to come back necessarily. They just hope that they drop seeds and that their seeds will make it through the winter. Um, whereas perennial flowers come back year after year, hopefully, uh, like this native perennial, the snake root, 
it will die back down to its roots. Um, its leaves and you know flowers and stems are not going to make it through the winter in this case, but it will die back down to its roots and the roots will survive underground living off their stored energy, their stored sugars that they've been making all during the growing season and they'll make it through the winter. And then they'll have the energy to send up new shoots when the time is right and the weather is nice again for them. And although I know we discuss this flower quite a bit in Central Park, it never hurts to remind you again that this plant is in fact poisonous, even though it is one of my favorites. All right, as we continue our walk, the next thing that we notice here um, is a fountain, an interesting drinking fountain on our right here on the path. And Something that I notice about the fountain is it has this interesting commemorative plaque in memory of Abraham Rosenberg. Um, and it also has these neat permanent steps, making it easy for children to climb up and get a drink at the drinking fountain. Uh, this has to do with Abraham Rosenberg being a philanthropist that uh, donated money to early childhood programs. Um, but of course, this fountain is not currently running as one of the ways that the park prepares for winter is by turning off the drinking fountain sometime in November, depending on temperatures. So we won't be able to get a drink today. All right, now as we look out, as we continue our walk, with these lush green grasses and the blue sky and the bright sun, it's kind of hard to imagine that winter is coming. I don't even really wanna think about winter. Maybe some of you are thinking that. Uh, it's too early to start thinking about it. Um, but we all need to prepare in our own ways, whether we're plants or animals or people working in the park or visitors to the park. Um, but this grass really look, is looking really lush. Uh, this is a nice time for our lawns in the park to get a nice, uh, a nice rest to come back and be really strong and healthy as they see lots and lots of visitors in the warmer months after the winter time. And as we continue on our walk, we notice this interesting sign the Swedish Cottage Marionette Theater, uh, which some of you may be familiar with. We're not gonna have time to stop by the, the Swedish Cottage today, um, but I think it's interesting. This is a unique sign. The, the park is quite mindful about its signage and I always find it interesting when there's different kinds of wayfinding signs. And so this is reminding us of how to get to the Swedish Cottage. Um, although we won't have time to stop by today, uh, the Marionette Theater does have shows that continue into winter, so if you need yet another reason to come into Central Park when it's a little bit colder out, um, there's yet another reason to um, check out the Swedish Cottage and the Marionette Theater. All right, and what we also pass by as we make our way further into the park is the maintenance yard at 79th Street. And speaking of preparing for winter, this is just a, a glimpse of just some of the many tools that the park uses to keep the park um, looking great and being maintained uh, safely and, and nice and tidy. Um, of course, one of the things that the park does uh, that we do to keep ourselves ready for winter is to clear all the leaves that are falling from the trees. Now, leaves that fall in woodland areas on the ground, those can just stay pretty much as a natural mulch, but leaves that are filling up paths would need to be cleared uh, before you know, you definitely want to get those out of the way before you have your rain and snow and freezing temperatures um, to keep things safe and clear for folks to, to make their way through the park. And lots of leaves are brought up to the mount, our composting operation, so that the leaves can uh, decompose and then properly um, have their nutrients added back to the soil of the park. Now at our feet, hard to see them, but I do see a little hopping and I hear some chirping. And it looks like we have some little friends at our feet here. And here's a much clearer picture of sparrows, which can sometimes be hard to see in the park because their gray and brown coloring kind of uh, blends in with some of the colors of the ground of the park, especially sidewalks and paths. But here is a picture from the Central Park Conservancy archives uh, showing us that in fact, the sparrows do stick around in wintertime. Um, so this is definitely a bird that you'll see throughout the winter in Central Park. And how do these little birds make it through winter? Well, um, sparrows, for one thing that they're doing is they're eating a lot. Uh, they're eating a lot to kind of fatten up and make sure that they have lots of stored fat to make it through the winter time. Um, mostly small birds need to maintain their body temperature in order to make it through the winter. 
uh, an average of about 105 degrees. Uh, and so they do that by staying active. So if it ever looks like birds are never resting, they, they rarely are, at least these little birds. Um, they're moving to stay active and maintain their body temperature. And they're eating a lot in preparation for uh, winter time. But if you should see a bird that looks especially plump, uh, don't give them too hard of a time. They also probably are fluffing their feathers out. Um, birds will fluff out their feathers, making them look even plumper. And that's just a way to help them insulate to further protect themselves from lower temperatures. And another bird that we will see uh, moving around the park, especially right now, who's also trying to snack like the sparrows and get ready for winter, uh, are these tufted titmice. And it was pretty hard to see this little um, individual moving around at my feet. So here is a nice clear picture from our Conservancy archives. And you can see from these cold leafless branches that this bird too makes it through the winter um, in the park. The park is filled with tufted titmice right now. This is one of my favorites. Um, so it's really neat to see them all over everywhere by your feet moving around and snacking. And they are closely related to chickadees who can also see lots of uh, in the park right now. Um, but I don't know about you, we need to maintain our own body temperatures here, so let's keep moving so we stay warm. Um, and what we see here as we continue our walk uh, are some trees that perhaps are preparing for winter in their own ways. So on the, um, on the left here, we see a deciduous tree and it's mostly dropped all of its leaves in preparation for winter. And then on our right, we see an evergreen tree, which is preparing for winter in its own way. So let's take a closer look at that evergreen. And we see that it is an atlas cedar. Um, an atlas cedar is a, a cedar tree, but it's native to the Atlas Mountains of North Africa. So it too can tolerate you know, colder temperatures and wind and things like that. But it, even though it's not native here, it's commonly used as an ornamental plant um, because it's more tolerant of hot and dry conditions than some other evergreen or conifer trees are. And because the, um, the oil that this tree produces is a natural deterrent to insects, often it's this kind of wood, this Atlas cedar wood is used in um, furniture drawers and um, wooden chests and things like that. And as we look above us, I see from the shadows uh, that it looks like we have another evergreen right here next to us. So let's take a closer look and see what kind of tree this is. And this appears to be an eastern pine. And it's also prepared for winter. Now this tree, unlike the um, Atlas cedar we were just looking at, this is native to North America. Oops. Um, Let's stay where we are for just a moment and keep looking at this uh, eastern pine. And the needles that we see that are so beautiful against the blue sky, um, this is the pine tree's version of leaves. Uh, they're just adapted uh, to be able to handle lower temperatures and ice and snow and things like that. Um, so a pine needle still has everything in it that a regular flat leaf that you might be more familiar with the pine needle still has everything, all those same parts in it. Uh, it's just rolled up uh, essentially into the shape of a needle. And that helps protect the central vein of the leaf from freezing temperatures, but it can still do everything that it needs to do, exchange gases uh, and photosynthesize and all of those important things. Um, but similarly to how fat can help animals stay warm in the winter, um, the rolled up structure of the pine needle actually helps the inner workings of the leaf stay protected during those freezing temperatures so that nutrients can still flow freely between um, the needle and the rest, of the, the rest of the tree. Pine needles are also prepared for winter because they have a waxy coating on the outside of them. Um, and that helps to protect the individual needle. It also holds in moisture um, because if anyone else has noticed, um, I often have to apply lots of chapstick uh, and hand moisturizer and moisturizer during the winter because uh, colder air holds less moisture and lots of us feel a little bit drier uh, in the winter time. And so trees also have to find their ways to hold on to moisture. And these waxy coated leaves that we'll see in a few different plants today all help to hold in that moisture. 
Um, and some studies have actually suggested that pymines, uh, which are the kind of terpenes or chemical compounds that are released uh, from these kinds of trees, and they're the things that give them this scent. Um, there have been studies that show they don't just um, smell good, which they obviously do, uh, but it's not just pleasant to smell. They actually may have an effect on our, uh, on our health. Um, in fact, you may have heard of something called forest bathing. We may have talked about that before, um, but the uh, Japanese Forest Agency encourages forest bathing, which essentially is just walking through the woods and breathing deeply and taking in some of these pine means um, because they can have supposedly potentially a positive effect on you. Um, some studies have suggested that they potentially have anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. So it's uh, it's worth enjoying taking some deep breaths and walking through pines um, in the park. And there's lots of great places to do that. Uh, we'll see some on our walk today near the 81st Street entrance, but also at the Pinedum. You can also enjoy some great um, pines and, and some delicious smells there too. So let's keep moving. We'll continue up the path. And we see um, just in the background there, we see the Delacorte Theater. Uh, poking out from behind a tree that hasn't lost all of its leaves yet. Of course, there's no Shakespeare in the park during the winter time. It would be a bit chilly to enjoy um, a play outside right now. But of course, cold weather could be a nice time to cozy up and catch up on your Shakespeare reading if you're falling behind, perhaps. Um, and maybe you want to read A Winter's Tale. Uh, a Winter's Tale, the Shakespeare play, uh, interestingly enough, does not have anything to do with winter. And I recently learned that a winter's tale um, was just kind of a term used to indicate a kind of fairy tale or a story that shouldn't really be believed, like a fable or a fairy tale you would tell uh, to a child. But let's keep moving. And speaking of waxy coatings, um, here is some more leaves that are ready for winter. They have already prepared themselves here. And these are mountain laurel leaves. So um, mountain laurels are closely related to rhododendrons, which you can see lots of in the park. There's lots of beautiful examples of rhododendrons in the Ramble and elsewhere. Um, and you may have noticed that they hold on to their leaves during the winter, but rhododendrons usually have a tendency to roll up their leaves. You might've thought that there was something wrong with your rhododendron. It rolls up its leaves to protect itself from losing too much moisture in the winter. Uh, mountain laurel leaves will kind of face the, the winter temperatures head on and they don't curl up their leaves. They allow their waxy coating to do that protection for them. And mountain laurels um, are a beautiful native plant. Uh, they will bloom in the shade, which is nice. Um, but it's also really important, like the snake root, it's really important to remember that mountain laurel is poisonous. All parts of the plant are poisonous. They have an absolutely beautiful blossom in the spring. So we'll have to come back and check out some mountain laurels in the spring and show you those beautiful flowers if you haven't seen them before. Um, but do keep in mind that those beautiful flowers in all parts of the plant are poisonous. But let's keep moving. I'm getting a little bit chilly, so we wanna keep moving and keep our body temperatures up. So we'll continue up this path. And hopefully making our way up these stairs should get our heart rate up and keep us warm. And at our feet, we notice a little pop of color. So even though lots of brown leaves uh, are on the ground and they've lost some of their color, there's only a little bit of fall foliage to see. We see this beautiful little aster blossom that has fallen and adds a nice little pop of color on our walk. And then going down the path, I notice another plant who is also ready for winter. This is English ivy uh, that you're probably familiar with. This is not a native plant. In fact, many people call uh, English ivy an invasive plant. It's not native and it does grow quite aggressively. However, it is a popular ground cover in lots and lots of gardens because it's very tolerant of shade. Uh, it's tolerant of all kinds of conditions and it's glossy leaves protect it, and it um, you know, will make it through the winter. So it has these beautiful evergreen leaves. So you have some green in winter time. Um, it will protect the ground a little bit and keep it warm. Um, but also, interestingly, ivy keeps growing during the winter time in, in many areas, even though most plants go into a kind of dormancy in the winter time. So even if they live through winter, many plants are dormant. Um, ivy can actually keep growing during the winter time. 
Now, something that many folks might know about ivy is that it's a climber, that it climbs things, the sides of buildings, the sides of trees, which is often why it can be a bit of a problem. Uh, so gardeners like to keep a watchful eye on this plant, uh, but it does flower and make berries, which can be eaten by birds. Um, but the climbing vine actually, you know, we mentioned it can climb trees and the sides of buildings. Um, and it does that through root-like structures on the underside of the plant uh, that exude a glue-like substance that actually helps them to stick to the sides of trees and buildings. So before this ivy grabs onto us and starts climbing onto us, let's keep moving on our walk. And we're getting close to Shakespeare Garden. We're just kind of at the overlook here. And right down below, the first plant that I notice uh, is a plant called lamb's ear. Um, I wish that you guys could come and experience this plant uh, in person, and I suggest if you can that you do. It's nice and soft. Uh, there's a reason it's called lamb's ear is because it feels fuzzy and soft and delicate, just like the ear of a lamb. And this plant is a little bit prepared for winter because its fuzzy leaves will help to hold ice and frost off of the actual surface of the leaf to protect it from damaging um, the leaf itself. And as we look out here, it's a beautiful view to take in. There's more evergreen trees and all the trees are letting us know, don't worry about us. We are ready for winter. We're gonna be fine. We've already set. Um, and this is such a beautiful view. I would like to take a seat, kind of enjoy it for a little bit. And there is a really nice bench right here, uh, the Charles B. Stover Memorial Bench. However, this bench is made out of granite. So this would be a bit chilly of a sit. Uh, so I think this might be a time I'd want to come back here when the angle of the sun was a little different or maybe come back when it's a little bit warmer, but let's keep going on our walk. And we see Belvedere Castle uh, just ahead of us here. And as we make our way up the steps to the castle, we notice these really darling cute little pine cones here, so tiny. So let's take a closer look at those. And it turns out um, this is an, this is a cedar tree, I believe. Um, let me just make sure I'm saying the right tree here. This is, this is also in the pine family. This is not a cedar tree. I think this is the hemlock. Um, but they have these really cute pine cones. Uh, they're very, very tiny but this is also uh, in the pine family and it is ready to take on winter. And as we make it up, not all the way to the top of the castle, but the first part of the terrace there, let's look out and enjoy the view. There's still some color on the trees and the beautiful blue sky is reflected in the pond. So still lots of color and views in the park right now. And then we'll take a look at the castle. Speaking of beautiful views, here is Belvedere Castle. Um, of course, the castle itself, the building was completed in 1872, um, but its purpose changed over time. So in 1919, the US Weather Bureau actually converted the building into a weather station uh, and created offices inside of the structure. But when they moved out of the building in the 1960s, the building fell into disrepair. But in 2019, uh, the Conservancy completed a comprehensive project to restore and modernize the building uh, and its terraces. This was also one of the first restoration projects uh, when the Conservancy formed in 1980 uh, was to restore the castle, but it was once again more recently uh, restored in 2019. Um, and part of the restoration in 2019 included addressing drainage and waterproofing uh, issues, as well as implementing climate control. Um, so the castle itself is all ready for winter. And here we see uh, Dr. Dan Draper. And no, he's not a character from Mad Men. This is Dr. Daniel Draper. Um, and he, um, he founded and helped to serve as the director of the Meteorological Observatory. And according to his New York Times obituary, he invented every instrument he used in the observatory uh, to measure rain and snow and different levels of moisture. Um, some of the tools that he invented and patented were a self-recording wind direction instrument and a device for recording the moisture of rain, snow, and the ozone, among many, many other tools. 
And when he retired at age 70, he was actually the oldest weatherman in the United States. But let's keep moving here. I will say that when we, uh, I took these photos, the, the real feel that day with the wind chill was 41 degrees. So uh, even though it's a little bit warmer today, let's keep moving and make our way down the path. We see uh, between the trees there, we can see the bus stop on the uh, transverse road there, the M79 bus stop. And further down the path, let's take a look at this really neat plant that also looks like it is ready for winter. This is a leather leaf viburnum. Um, and so its leaves too are prepared against frost. And you can see that it's already set its flower buds, but those buds are protected through lots of, um, lots. it's kind of like furry bud scales to protect it from any damage from frost. As we keep making our way down the path, we also notice, you might've noticed if you've been walking in the park, these red ladders. Um, this is another way of preparing for winter as some of our water bodies will start to freeze and have ice. Um, it's not safe to make your way onto any water body in the winter time in the park. And these are here as a visual reminder that you should not enter the ice uh, in the park unless you are at Woolman Rink and um, you're going ice skating in a sanctioned area. Otherwise, you should definitely stay off the ice. Uh, so these letters are here in case of a necessary rescue, but also a visual reminder to please stay off the ice and stay safe. And we see some beautiful bright red leaves giving us a few more fall colors. And then we see a squirrel, uh, finally. And squirrels are known as one of our best winter preppers in the park. Um, squirrels are known for preparing for winter for months ahead, that they are collecting and storing their acorns, as you're probably familiar with. Um, squirrels and chipmunks and mice um, all do something similar, that they store up lots and lots of food, and they fatten up. They eat lots of food to fatten up for winter. And they do sleep a lot in the winter time, uh, but they don't actually fully hibernate. Uh, which reminds me, let's um, launch our poll. All right, I hope that you can see the poll. Um, so I'd like to know how all of you prepare for winter, um, whether you are someone who tries to sleep through winter and just wait for spring. Uh, do you get all of your equipment out and enjoy winter sports? Maybe you stock up on delicious food and cozy blankets and movies uh, and just stay in fly somewhere warmer for the season or break out your winter field guides for brisk nature walks in the snow. Um, all right, and as you continue to vote on that, we'll keep going and make our way down the path. We see uh, the statue of uh, King Yagewo, uh, and hopefully he is ready for winter. We can see that he's made it through the winter before. Um, he actually received some extensive restoration work as you know, restoring his patina and his coating so that he can make it and survive through ice and snow. And we also rebuilt the structure that attaches him to the base. And across from the thing, we see the pond. We can take in some views. In the distance, we see some blurry ducks. I apologize, but that's another thing to look forward to in the winter time here in the park are all the migrating ducks that are flying here uh, south. This is south for them. So you can see things like buffle heads and northern shovelers and American coots and things like that. This day I saw a hooded morganser out there but couldn't get a very good close shot. And looking under the water, uh, unfortunately we don't see any turtles in Turtle Pond today. Uh, they might be um, starting to do their partial hibernation in the mud as they settle down there. Uh, and they have some special tools for staying down there and living on um, very little uh, slowing down their um, metabolism to make it through the winter. And we are nearing the end of our walk here, but we've made it quite a way through the park to the pond. And let's just take one last look um, at Turtle Pond and think about those turtles, uh, hopefully making it through the winter at the bottom. Um, and I hope all of you are ready for winter. It looks like many of you have stocked up on delicious food, cozy blankets, and classic movies. That's what uh, almost 50% of you, uh, that's how you'll be making it through the winter time. And uh, although some of you have broken out your winter field guides for brisk nature walks. Um, so I certainly hope that we see some of you uh, in the park. And otherwise, if we don't, then we'll see you on a weekly walk. Um, I wanna remind you, uh, it's been wonderful to have you join us today. Um, this will be our last weekly walk for November. 
we will not be here November 30th. Um, we will not be here November 30th as all of the tour guides will be on a special professional development um, event, but we will be back and we'll join you December 7th. So just again, we will not be here November 30th. There will be no weekly walk November 30th, but we will see you again, uh, same place, same time, um, December 7th uh, for a weekly walk with Jose about obscure statues. And uh, if you'd like to talk more about the winter, um, one of our upcoming tours is the Winter Wonderland Tour. Um, so you can think about joining us for that Saturday, December 17th at 11 a.m. Um, but thank you so much for joining us. I'll be here and keep this open for a little bit for any last minute questions. Um, and we look forward to seeing you again Wednesday, December 7th. Uh, but until then, from the Central Park Conservancy, have a wonderful holiday. If you celebrate, stay safe and be well. Thank you. Take care, everybody.